So that's why that was for level two. If you have question on le level two or layer two, don't hesitate. Everything is clear? Okay. So we can have a look now to layer three. But here we are going to, to see something else. We start looking at layer two, but we are going to study it in, in more details, is to cut, to cut information into blocks and create network PDUs or packets. So here it's uh, also a way for the Master of Science student to learn a little bit about French uh, geography. And so this is France. If you don't know, it's France. So we are here in Rennes. And there is different city we are going to, to, to see. So Lille, Le Havre, Strasbourg, etc., etc. And so imagine that we are a bank. And we want to create a network between all our uh, agencies around France. So, what can we do? So, we can, for example, establish what we call a full mesh. It means that, it means that we will put some links between all the agencies. Okay, so we, we call a company and we ask to put an optical fiber between Nice and Rennes, for example, or Nice and Brest, etc. etc. <coughs> so we will have a wire between all the possible agents. So do you think it's realistic? Hmm? Do you think it's realistic? No. Why? It's too expensive. Yeah. It will be expensive because here to put a wire between Toulouse and Brest, it means that I have to to dig uh, on the ground to put this wire, and so it's something that costs a lot of money. So that's the first problem, so it's expensive. Suppose that now I open a new, um, a new agency, for example, in, uh, I don't have Paris here, but I open one in Paris. It means that I have to uh, create new connection between all the other agencies. So it will be also very expensive to create a new uh, agency. And the more agency I will have, the more money I will have to spend. Because if I have 10 agencies, if I open one more, I will have 11 con 10 connections to do. If I have 12, I will have 11 connections, etc. Et it means that it will cost a lot of money to do that. And in fact, if I put an optical fiber, then I will not use it all the time. Because on optical fiber, I can send a lot of data, and my bank will not use the network, all the, the links, sorry, all the time. So it means that I spend a lot of money, and I will not use the resources all the time. So that's a, that's a problem. But we have also some advantages. The first one is that it's very easy to, to set up because when I want to send, I am in Strasbourg, I want to send a information to Brest, what do I do? I just, I have different wire and I know the, the wire to Brest and I send the information on the wire to Brest. I'm in Brest, when I receive the information, I know that it comes from the wire of Strasbourg so I don't have to identify the information in another way than by the physical link I send on it. So it's, addressing is very easy. Just look at the wire you use. I have, no, um, I have no waiting time because I have a resource just for me. So I can use it when I want. So that's good, and I don't have a very complex network to manage, because when I want to send the information to Brest, I have a direct link, 
that goes to rest. So that's something that is very easy to manage at the network level, but costs a lot of money. So nobody can offer this kind of network. So how can we do to reduce the cost? Some establish one office as a uh, master office and the rest of them as slaves. Okay, so for example, in uh, REN, just I set up a master and I put just links to the between REN and the rest of France. So that's a possibility. So here, the topology we have here is what we call a full mesh yes. because we have link for. So mesh is mean that we have link in different order that go from one point to another, and full mesh it means that we have all the possibilities. What you propose is a star topology, which means that I have a central device or central site, and everything goes to that central site. So that's a possibility. In fact, it's also very costly because if I have uh, something in this. I have to put a wire to, to red. So maybe if I have one in Marseille and one in uh, in this, I need two links that goes to red. You can set up a ring connection. Ring if you want. Or much simpler if I can. Much simpler is, for example, to create a backbone, what we call a backbone, that goes from some city in France, and here I can, so here, for example, I connect Paris to Rennes, Poitiers, Toulouse, Marseille, Lyon, and Strasbourg. And what I do, I just connect agencies, over agencies, to that backbone. So here, for example, I have, I open an agency in, uh, in Nice, in this. Nice. So I will just have to connect to Marseille, not go to Rennes. So here, I, you see that I have less, much less resources than in the previous example. So this is a a way to do it. So what are, so we saw some advantages. It means that here I have less link. So since I have less links, I can, I will spend less money in my infrastructure. But what are the drawbacks of this topology? Connections are lost due to the, the offline. Connection? You mean the link? Start, yeah. Okay, if the link, for example, from Rennes to Brest is both broken, I cannot talk to the rest of the world. In the previous case, if it was uh, to a cut, I can use the other wires. Okay, so, and for example, here also, if Rennes Poitiers is a cut, so I cannot have communication between Lille, Lille and France. So of course it's less reliable because I have only one here. You see that this structure here is a tree. So I have, why is it a tree? Because I have only one path to go from one point to another. So what can I do is, for example, to make a link between Paris and Strasbourg. So in that case, I have two paths to go from one point to another. And this way, I can increase the reliability of my network. So that's really a problem. But we can solve it by adding some other links, extra links. So it will cost me some money to do it. I don't need it, I don't need it necessarily in a normal case. But in case of failure, I have a backup path. OK. So what? How a bank, for example, can send information from Brest to Nice? Uh, 
But I'm going to have some uh, information in work in Brave, has some information and want to send information to this. Students. Yes, of course. How, but how the network knows that? Addressing. Addressing. Addressing, routing, yeah. So pro can you propose some uh, way to do it? In the, in the scenes that, that are referred to the background and that have uh, satellite nodes of them into the routers so they can. What? What's that? Huh? What's that? I don't know. I never heard about the router. Router? Uh, yes, no. Uh, but what's that? <coughs> Maybe what is it? It's a replace switch. How it works? Switch. Switch. Huh? switch. A switch. Or if you want a switch, a router, gateway, what? Intermediary node. How it works? So here I have an Excel file. And I want to send it to I am in breast. And I want to send it to Paul. How can I do that? Yes. So I have to take this. And add somewhere, let's say, pool. Okay? So I add some information. And I send it. So I am in breast, so I have no choice. I send it to Ren. And then Ren has to analyze the destination. And somewhere there is a table that says that if I want to send to uh, Po, I have to send it to Poitiers. Same thing in Poitiers. If I want to reach Po, I have to send on that link that goes to Toulouse. And in Toulouse, I analyze the destination and I say I have to send it here. And Po receives a letter, or receives the Excel file. Does he know where it comes from? Yeah. It should be in the in the yes. that I have. You have to have the source. Because when I receive something here, I don't know where it, it comes from Toulouse. Because it's a physical link. But I have no way where it comes from the rest of France. So I have also to put here the source address if you want. The SAP. Service access point that define where it comes from. Okay, so this is one possibility. We are you are very computer scientist uh, oriented because it's something that we can see in network. But for example, we can imagine that between our network is configured. And for example, from 2 in the morning to 3, or 1 in the morning to 2, I set up here the network. The network is configured to send information to Paul. OK? And if I do that, if I have to send information, I have to wait my time. And at this time, I will be able to send information. So, for example, the network manager may have set up that between 1 o'clock and 2, one, I have also communication between Lille and Le Havre and Strasbourg and Nice. And so I can configure my network to have a different time of the day 
communication between different cities, and I can use that time to send the information. If I do that, I don't need to add what you propose. I just have to send the information at the correct time. So this is one possibility, but it's not very flexible. Because if I have no information to send, my network will have established that link, and um, I will have to, I uh, will not use it, but for example, I have information to send to Lille, but not to Pau. I will have to wait my time to send it to Lille. So to establish this, so uh, maybe not very optimal. And for example, I need more than one hour to send the information between Nice and Pau, so I have to wait two days to send all my information, even if there is no over traffic. So to set up some time to send communication is not a good one. So a better way is to talk with the network and add some dynamicity. And this is what you did when you proposed me to add some information before and say that this is from Brest to Pau. So it's the first thing you send to the network, and so you inform the network that you are going to, to send this information. So there is two possibilities. One is to add it to the message, but another possibility is to separate it. And first, talk with the network and say, for example, I am, I am in Brest, but the network knows that you are in Brest, but you can repeat it. And I want to go to Po because I have 30 minutes of flight transfer. And so the network will say, wait until 1 p.m. And at 1 p.m. you can send the information. So here it's more flexible because you, the network will try to optimize communication. And for example, at that time, if a guy in Strasbourg wants to send data to Nice, we can have the same, uh, he can have also the same time at 1 p.m. and the network can organize itself. If a guy in uh, Toulouse wants to send information to Lyon, <coughs> And then the network will know that this link between Marseille and Lyon is busy. So we will say, wait until one, uh, 2 p.m. or 1.30. So we, we can have this dialogue with the network to tell you when you can use it. So this is one, one possibility. But you see, it's more complex to implement because you have two things to do when you do that. First thing is to define a way to talk with the network. So you talk with the network, and then, so here you remember, you have a black box. So you don't know how it works. You talk with the network, you receive some information, and say at that time you have to, you can talk. And the black box will trigger in a way we don't know, we'll set up all the intermediary nodes to have an appropriate configuration to allow to carry information from node to node until the destination. So this is one possibility. This possibility is to say, OK, you can do this transfer at that time. But we don't like, we don't, uh, like that much this, uh, this method. Because you, you have to wait a time, and of course here the time, I say hours, but it can be seconds, but normally it's not what you do. So what you do is, for example, you talk with the network, and the network will say you, yes, 
or no? So you try. I want to talk with Marseille. And if it's possible, I will have an answer. Yes, do it. If I, it's not possible because there is no resources, then I will have no, you can't. And so you have to try later. So it will not give me the schedule, but just tell me if it's okay or not. And normally what we'll have when you have the yes, is that with the yes, you will have an ID. And this ID will be used to send your information. So it's not always the case, but it's one possibility. So what we have here, you see that we have the way to send information. So we add maybe an ID. So here we define a protocol. And here it's for data. And here it's to control the network. So it's another protocol, totally different. So we call it control plane, or control protocol, or signaling protocol. It will not make no difference at that time. And in fact, we have two interfaces with the network. One is to set up the network, to configure the network. And the second one is to send the information. OK? So. That's something important because we will see that this afternoon when we'll see the telephony network, ISDN telephony network. And you know it by yourself when you use it. You dial a number, so you hang up your phone, and you can make some noise on your phone to dial a number. If you are very, very clever, or you, you can do it by your mouth. So you can dial by yourself some by doing tones, but it's very complex. But generally, you have some tools that do the tones for you. And here you have, with some tone, you give some digits to the network. And the network understands these digits. It's a phone number. And what will do the network? If he has capacity, he will set up equipment in the middle, devices in the middle, to make the path between you and a guy that is at the overhead. And if it's possible, then it's OK, and then make the rings the other telephone. And then you have a data path, and so you can talk on that data path. OK? So it's one possibility we, we are going to, to investigate. So. This is uh, the first step for the network. And then we talk about messages. So this is one, one thing. So we have developed this signaling protocol between uh, uh, you and the network to tell where you want to talk to. And then we have to establish a way to send the information. And what we will have in most of the computer network is something that is called store and forward. What does it mean store and forward? It means that when I want to send, I'm done talking with the network, and when I want to send a pack a message from Lille to Nice, for example, I will send my message to the intermediary node. And the intermediary node, for example in Paris here, will memorize all the message. We'll check if the message is correct. We'll analyze the destination, or we'll look at the ID I have added to the message. And using this ID of the destination, we'll find where he has to send the information. So then he will send it to Ren. Ren will store it in its memory and do the same uh, process, find where you have to send it, etc., etc., et until we reach the destination. So we are doing store and forward because, for example, here I talk with the network, and, for example, I have 
Some people in the lab that wants to talk to Po, and some people in Lille that wants to talk to Nis. If I, I am not nice, so the guy in Le Havre starts the communication to Po, and then the guy in Nis want, tells the network, I want to talk with Nis. What will be the answer? We don't know it. So one answer can be no, because the resource is already allocated to communication between Le Havre and Po. That is not so good, because if you look at computer communication, what do we have? I can send a file, but I can also talk. I am in Le Havre, and I want to uh, see a computer in Po. So I am in my computer in Le Havre. I type a command. The command is send to Po. The computer in Po do some uh, computation as a result and send the result to Le Havre. Okay. Then I look at what is the result. So it takes me time to think about what to do. And then I type another command. I send my command to Po, etc., etc. So it means that here, if I we I take all the resource between Le Havre and Po for the communication, it means that I have here some place where the link are not used. And of course, I, if I ever not use, I'm losing money because I don't allow over communication. So here is good when I need very strong uh, interactivity. For example, in the telephony network, you want your voice, that your voice goes as fast as possible to the destination. So you will reserve resources for you to send your voice. So, and if there is no more resources, then you cannot call. So that happened in uh, the 1st of January at midnight. You cannot call because you know that all the links are taken by other users. And the network tells you there is no possibility to do more. I cannot carry more information. But here it's because we want to reserve offer a quality of service. In, for data network, we don't care about that. Because I'm sending a file between Po, uh, Lille and Po, for example, or Lille and Po, if it takes one minute to be transferred on, or one minute on 30, I do, not, I do not matter. So computer don't care about time, they can wait. Human uh, voice cannot wait. So that's why we are going to separate, or long time ago, we separate these two technologies, and we had a telephony network for voice, and a data network for computer data. Now we'll see after when we analyze that now we have merged these two networks because technology allows it, but when technology didn't allow it, we get two separate networks and two ways to make it work. So the telephony network was reserving resources, and when you have the resource, you can send the information. Even and if you don't have information to send, then you lose you lose your money. You lose your money. For example, if you establish a phone call and you say nothing, you will pay for the phone call, but you will not send some information. For data, we want the opposite. We want to put as much as possible information on the wire, even if we introduce delay, because we don't care about delays, but what we want is us to have as much as possible data on the link and use constantly with the link. If I can do it, if I can send all the time data on my link, it means that 
my real network will be very, very cheap. So that's why in computer network, we prefer that store and forward mechanism because in the store and forward, here I, I am, so I'm sending a file from Loav to Po. So I can send also a file from Loav to, to, to from Lille to Nice. But when it arrives in Paris, I will store the information. And when the link between Paris and Rennes will be free, I will send the information I have stored. So that's a good way. So we buffer on any node the information. And when the resource is free, we send it on the link. Of course, it introduces delay. So here we have an example. I have two communications, one between Brest and Pau, and the other one between uh, Lille and Nice. So what happens? So here you see I am in a store and forward mode. It means that uh, in uh, Lille, I send my information. My information is totally stored completely stored in the Paris node. So the Paris node verifies the information if the TRC is correct, for example, at layer 2. Then it goes at layer 3. At layer 3, we analyze the header, and we know where we have to send the information. So here I have to send it to REN. At that time, REST is sending something also to REN to go to post. So it means that here, the two messages will be memorized into the REN memory, router memory, or node memory. So now we have a conflict, because we have to send two messages at the same time on the link, on the link between REN and Twitch. So we don't do that. In fact, here what we do is to send first the message from Lille to Nice, and then we send the message from Brest to Pau. So it means that here, this message will be delayed by the other message. And then here, we split. So the message from uh, Lille to Nice goes to, from Toulouse to Marseille, and the message from Toulouse to Pau, uh, goes to Pau, and this one goes to Nice. Okay? So that's what we can do by the store and forward technique. So what do we do next? So here, for example, if I analyze what happened on my name, what do I have? I have my message that goes from Lille to Nice. So we are in store and forward. So I'm sending a message. So you see, you remember that we have two times to take into account. One is the propagation delay, the time it takes to send one bit from one point to another. So you have delay due to distance and you have delay due to electronics. So it's very difficult to reduce this delay because it's a physical value. And you have the sending time. It means that I have a file of 20 megabits or megabytes. So it takes a certain time to, to send this information. So here you see that I'm sending bits. I memorize this information in Paris. Normally, I have some time is here to process it, but it's quite fast, so I did not represent it here. And then you have the other message. So what we see is that, you see that the store and forward introduce a lot of delay. Because here I have the, the first bit, I cannot send the first bit when I receive it. I have to memorize the entire file 
before sending this survey. So I will introduce a lot of delay. And the longer will be the file, the longer will be the delay. So that's one problem. It's not a, really a problem for you, because you know that you are sending a long file, so it's a cost to send a file. But, for example, in Marseille, or the, in, in Brest, Brest wanted to talk with Paul. If this, you are sending for two hours a message, and Brest has a very small message to send to Paul. What happens here is that this message, the blue message, will be delayed for, by two hours due to the green message. So it means that here, I am losing something I would like to have on network, which is the fairness between users. It means that all users believe to have the network for only for them. And they are not bothered by over-transmission. Here's not the case, because if someone is monopolizing the network with its own messages, then it can delay my message. So, it's not something uh, very good. So, what we can do also is what happens if the speed is doubled. For example, here you see that we have some uh, thin lines that are the lines between an agency and the backbone. Until now, I consider that all the speeds as well were the same. Okay, but we can imagine that we can put more speed on the backbone. And if I put more speed on the backbone, what does it mean? It means that, for example, I double the speed. So here, of course, it will take some time to the same time to send my message between Lille and Paris because I don't double the speed. But in the backbone, I double it. So propagation delay will, be, will remain the same. But here, you see that the time it takes to send a message will be shorter. And that's another advantage of store and forward, is that if I was sending bit per bit, so here I have a link at one megabit per second. So the bit will arrive at a certain speed. And here the speed is doubled. If I take it bit per bit, I will not be able to send the other bit because I'm sending faster the bit than I receive them. So I will not, it will not be possible to change the speed. Here, by doing store and forward, I have information so I can send it. Uh, faster in uh, the other day. And in fact, when we do that, by increasing the speed, we increase the fairness. Because here my message between Brest and Po will be less delayed. Because here I will be half of the time. And if I have a faster speed, for example, I multiply by 10 the speed in the backbone. So here you see that the delay for the blue message will be smaller. So that's something very important. We are going to see uh, that in more details. But what we see is that the more speed we have, or the faster as the link in our backbone, the, fair, uh, the better is the fairness. So my message will not bother the other. Because the transmission speed, here you see that the delay is very, very, I introduce is very, very small. So that's why I talk about the fact that we have two, we had in the past the need for two technologies, one for voice, and one for data. And nowadays, it's no more the case. 
Because in the backbone, we can have very, very high speed transmission compared to the access. For example, if you look at your ADSL link, you may have, if you are very lucky, you go, can go up to uh, 20 megabit per second. But it's a very, you are very, very lucky if you get that speed. In the backbone, usually you have 2.5 gigabit per second link. So it means that you, you send uh, your voice packet or your data packet here, but in the backbone, the time to send this information is very, very limited. So it means that you, you don't, we, your voice packet will not be delayed by over that kind of traffic. So it's possible to, to do that when you are high speed. If you are low speed, so it will take two hours too much time to send the information, like in that case, then if the blue packet were a voice packet, we will have to develop a new novel technology that reduces the delay. But when we increase speed, we can merge with this technology. So, that's a possibility. So I remember you remind you what is the problem. We send a message, we memorize it on the intermediary node, and then we send it on the link. So we see that on high speed links we have fairness, on low speed link we have no fairness, and maybe one question is, what is the size of the memory I need? So I am a network manager, and here, what will be the size of the memory I need on my link? to memorize messages. Sarah, it's linked to the, no, it's the, it's also linked to the size of the packets. Will be of, usually, of what? The size of the, of the data. Yeah. Uh, will be usually going to the network. Uh, do you know the size of the network the data? No. no. I say 20 megabits, maybe megabyte for a file, but some of a bank or some of a user can send one gigabit of data. And if I'm sending one gigabit of data, I need one gigabit of memory to do store and forward. So that's a problem. Because my network is not neutral. If I say, okay, I'm taking two gigabit of memory in my nodes. So it costs a lot of money to do that. And if one user is sending a message with three megabit of data, a gigabit of data, then he will not be able to do it because there is not enough memory in the router. Or in the intermediary node. So, we are in the good way by using message and doing store and forward. It works well, it has good properties. We can have different speed links when we go from one node to another. We can use as much as possible when it's needed the links. But we don't know how to dimension the net. So that's why what we are going to do is to limit the size of the message inside the network. So we are going to use what we call packets. And packets will have a maximum length. For example, in the internet, usually it's about 1.5 kilobit, uh, uh, kilobits, uh, kilobytes of data. And if I have something larger than that, then I will ask my transport layer to cut it in two pieces. So this way, by using some packets or PDU with a limited message, a limited size, I have some good properties. For example, here it's message, store and forward of message. Now if I do the same with packets, I increase the transition speed. I, of course, now I know 
I can dimension the memory, uh, the memory of my router, or I can more or less modelize it, because you know that if you have two links that goes on intermediary node and the traffic leaves, here you cannot, you cannot dimension, you cannot know how much memory you need. Because in that case, you have doubled too much, uh, twice the traffic that enters than leaves. So here you have to memorize more and more packets. Here, basically solving the problem by receiving the first bit and sending it as fast as possible. Yes, it's not the bit here. I will memorize the packet. packet. And I will send it just after. And the smaller you make the packet. The smaller I make the packet, the faster I will send it. But the smaller I make the packet, you know that the packet is not just data. It's an either plus data. So I see if, if I cut too much the packet, then I will send much either than data. So there is a trade-off between the size of the packet and uh, what, we, uh, what we want to send. So here, what do I do? I cut my message. And when I'm sending the first packet, I can receive the other one from uh, on the other link. And etc. etc. So you see that that way, we increase the transmission speed. And if I have an error, for example, if I have a transmission error and I want to retransmit this packet, I will just retransmit this packet. If I have a transmission error in my 2 gigabit file, then I have to retransmit my 2 gigabit file. So it's more efficient in case of error. And you will play also with the packet size when you are on a radio link. Because when you are a radio link, you know your error rate. And if you have a too big packet, then you know that the risk for error is too high. So if you reduce it, then from time to time, you are lucky and you can send some information without errors. So we can play with that. Of course, you will see in more detail in different technology how we can do that. But what's one possibility? The other thing is that we increase fairness. Because here you see that I have my blue traffic that comes from Brest to Po, and here I don't have to wait for the whole file, but I can send it in the middle of the green farm. So here my delay will be reduced. And if the speed of the link is smaller, as we saw before, my, my delay will be more reduced again. So I have two factors. First, I'm sending packets, and maybe I have higher speed here. So here I increase fairness, and I reduce waiting delays. So in fact, of course, when I receive a file, so I don't do it everywhere, but in fact, the reality will be more this. It means that I'm sending all my packets at the beginning, and when I receive them, I will have a delay that is introduced by queuing in all the nodes and all the traffic that goes before me on other links. But normally, the delay we will have will be shorter than if we have used uh, message uh, switching. Okay? 